Well, today is Juneteenth. It's the day that commemorates the end of slavery back in 1865. But 155 years later, our country is still fighting for racial equality. So the recent deaths of unarmed African Americans by white police and armed citizens have caused unrest throughout our entire nation. It's a similar scene our country faced during the civil rights movement. Ada's on your side with Deanne Roberts. She spoke to historic figures of the civil rights movement for a look at the protests then and now. Good morning. Good morning. It was only 60 years ago when blacks couldn't sit inside of this old F.W. Woolworth store. And it was only 33 years ago when an unarmed black man was killed by a white Tampa police officer, sparking days of riots and protests. Here we are, decades later in 2020, people are still protesting, some for the same reasons, right here through the streets of downtown Tampa. I sit down first and they just filled in around me. February 29th, 1960. And I said, well, we're going to do it anyway. You guys just have to bail us out of jail because we're going to do it. Leading other college students, Clarence Fort sat down at the lunch counter at F.W. Woolworth. Back then, blacks could only buy things there. This sit-in demonstration led to the desegregation of many places in Tampa. 17 years later. A police officer fired a single bullet and it hit Martin in the back. June 11, 1967, 19-year-old Martin Chambers was shot and killed by a white Tampa police officer. Four days of riots followed Chambers' death. Local historian Fred Hearns witnessed the aftermath. They burned down four buildings on Central Avenue, including several businesses. 20 years later, on April 7, 1987, the police officer wound up using a chokehold. Killing Melvin Hare, an unarmed black man. Three nights of protests filled Tampa streets. Black lives matter. Here we are in 2020, unarmed blacks killed by white police officers. Decades later, the same call for justice. No justice, no peace. However, Ford and Hearn say protests today look a little different. We never saw that many white people marching with African Americans. Then it was mostly African Americans, but uh, uh, they all feel the pain now. It's a lingering pain Ford and Hearns hoped would have been eased by now. However, they still remain hopeful. But we have made tremendous gains, tremendous gains. But it's something we shouldn't have to do as American citizens. And everybody's saying black lives matter. We've been saying that uh, forever. And it's a beautiful thing now to see other people saying that because indeed black lives do matter. Both Hearns and Ford believe truth, reconciliation, and effective leadership are ways that could help lead us to ending racial injustice. You know, David, one thing I want to mention from our interview, we talked about the reactions we're currently seeing from demonstrators and from protesters, whether it be burning buildings or blocking off certain streets. Both Hearns and Ford say some of those same demonstrations took place in the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. They say that pain, that anger we're seeing in people currently may be because people are still just fighting for the same issues. Yeah, a lot of people are in pain. These are very difficult times, and hopefully, I'm hoping that in the future, we can get to that point where we are all treated equally. Thanks so much, Deanne.